This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're at MSG in New York. How do you get to every show, Dean? I really want to know. How do you have the time? Today I walked. <laughs> no, but seriously, I see you at every card. Whether you're affiliated with a card or not, you're at every card. I'm a fan of boxing, so I love my job. I love being in boxing. Um, obviously, we had a big card last week. And um, obviously, I thought I'd take a break. I've got a bit of business here, and uh, why not mix it, the pleasure and the business together? You know, my business partners were, were down, are down here, so I thought I'd come and hang out with them, get some meetings done, and uh, why not enjoy uh, another historic show? You know, an undisputed fight here, last week 90,000, this week a women's 18 and a half thousand record, so being part of history. So when I grow old and I tell my grandkids I've been part of history nearly every show, but I just love boxing, so I get about, you know what I mean? I just want to go actually not even back to last week but before and there was a lot of stuff going on between your side and Frank Warren um, but in the last week and a half everything seemed to be resolved and you were good in the promotion Dillian was very good in the promotion as well so what happened behind the scenes to resolve that Dean? Um, I think things behind the scenes in terms of I wouldn't say contractual but you know dealing with them as men to men I think they kind of came to some amicable decisions and Things were, um, there was an amends made and um, those guys got it done and that's how it got across the, across the line. Okay, just want to go back to the fight. Um, I saw a moment after it where Tyson come up to you and said something. What was said in that exchange? Uh, as soon as the fight ended, Tyson come up to you and said something. Yeah, yeah, no, he come up to me, hell of a guy, gave me a kiss on the cheek and said, Dean, you know, great fight. And he said, respect to you, Dean. And I said, listen, respect to you, man. You're a hell of a man, you're a hell of a fighter. Obviously, some words we exchanged in the build-up. But look, it's not personal. I'm backing my bro, you know, you're backing yourself. And he's just saying to me, look, a lot of respect to Dillian. He's actually more technical and skillful than I actually thought he was. He, I, he said, I'm not being honest, I thought I was going to steamroll him. I thought he was just a big old um, lummox on legs, going to walk forward and I was going to pepper him and get him out. Obviously, he come out and he boxed and he said he's very strong like a, a bull. So there were some nice things he was saying. So I've got to give him credit. That's why I don't want to talk too negative. We need to give him his credit while he's here. Hell of a hell of an athlete. He's definitely probably the best of our era. Obviously, Joshua's up there. We must give Joshua his credit. But this man's undefeated. There's no one that's been in the ring with him that's had the remedy to beat him. Jonte Wilder managed to get a draw, but, you know, that wasn't a real draw, but it is what it is. Um, but we've got to give him credit. Him and his dad, his dad come up to me, and we had a talk, and they said, look, Dillian will come again. And, we, and I believe they said, uh, Tyson and his dad said, I believe Dillian will become champion once we are, we're gone. Because he's, he's big, he's strong, and he can box, and he can move. So we feel like some of the other guys might not be able to deal with what I was able to deal with because, you know, I'm a lot bigger and more technical than some of them guys. And I, and I believe that as well. I see a lot of people criticising Dillian's performance, but do we have to just say that Tyson took his strength away from him and give Tyson the credit for the win? I, I wouldn't say that. I would look at, there's many different factors. We must give Tyson credit because he's a hell of a, hell of a tactician, his team, they had a strategy. But at the same time, we've got to understand, both guys, if you, if there wasn't much in the fight in terms of, it was a chess match, so both guys had to think a lot. Dillian came out southpaw, was jabbing, double jabbing, going to the body, manoeuvring, and obviously Tyson was negating a lot of stuff, but Dillian was still in the conversation. Obviously, people are complaining about some, um, what is it, uh, one of the, the judges had Dillian winning at some point. I, I'm not going to lie, I didn't think there was much in that fight. It wasn't like there was a clear winner doing anything in the fight. Um, obviously, we could see he's the favourite, bigger guy, awkward guy, skillful guy, but at the same time, I felt like Dillian's jab was really good. Um, I think that was probably a surprising addition to those guys, how good his jab was, because he was catching um, Fury and he made Fury miss a, a few bits with, when he was Ladies stepping off. I felt like that's probably what he maybe should have stuck to a little bit more. Um, but then obviously later on he was overreaching because Fury was stepping back. And I mean, but look, what, Fury's never going to make it easy. When you go in there with Fury, it's never going to be an easy night work. We know Dillian's been knocked out by an uppercut before with Alexander Vekin. So were you guys not worried that Tyson could pull out that shot? Listen, I don't, I don't even want to go into that. I've, I've spoke about it in the ring before I left the ring. I mentioned it in the sixth round, in the corner. In the same round, in the corner. I mentioned it, but look, it doesn't matter if I mention it because when I said it to Dillian after, he would say it doesn't matter because it's, you know, even if they, because I told some of the guys, but they didn't tell him. Even if I did say, it might not have changed things, but I think he became square 
there and Tyson fired at the, the perfect there, time. The um, and, and that's what happens when you set trap. I think um, he just got caught cold with the shot and it is what it is, you know what I mean? A couple of more things. See, Dillian did that interview with Sky where he said the push is what determined the outcome of the fight. I, I think more so he was more saying that and it was another contributing factor. It wasn't the only thing because there was a punch no and I'm sure he mentioned there was a punch and it was buzz and the push. An accumulation of both things, obviously, if you're already buzzed and you get pushed very hard and you hit the canvas, what do you think is going to happen? You're more than likely going to either get whiplash a little bit and your head's going to be more fuzzy than it would be. So he was saying that I should have been allowed a little bit more time to recover. But look, it was never going to happen. It was a Frank Warren show, it was a Tyson Fury show, and they were just wanting to go on the head of a bang. Do you not think the referee saved him from potentially getting hurt further? Hell yeah, hell yeah. But at the same time, the ref could have said, you know, could have stopped, One put him in the corner and said, you know, Tyson, you know, you know, pushing is not allowed. You know, sometimes when they push, they say, hey, no hands, no hands. He could have gone to him and said no. And Dylan could have been recovering in the corner while he'd done that. You get what I'm saying? When you're quite fit and strong, you tend to recover quite quickly. You know, when you see elite athletes, they tend to recover from getting buzzed quite quickly, how fit they are. But look, like you're saying, you're right, he's safe for another day, but it, all it is is, it's just one of them things where you're, you know, you know, we're gutted, obviously, what happened. So, you know, when you look at the table, you look at it, you say, whoa, that was, that was quite a big push, man, bloody hell. Why would the ref come in and back me on that occasion? There was a lot of things going on. Obviously, both of them hitting in the back of the head, the elbow, the, 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 the head cut, loads of things, but look, it's heavyweight boxing, man, and the showbiz, man. It is what it is. The show must go on. Last one. I know from his Instagram post, it looks like Dillian will carry on, which is great to see. He's got a choice now. Boxer and Sky, Matram and DAZN, maybe even BT and Frank. Um, so that choice has got to be made. Who do you want to see Dillian in the ring with? Give me some names. I'm not sure. Listen, my, mo my, my concern more than anything is that Dillian recovers. He takes the time he needs to recover and um, his health is assured. And that we, you know, that when we come back, we, we try and fix those holes what are there. Because like you said, I didn't really get to touch on it. There's a few occasions where he's been caught with those uppercuts. We need to, we need to, we need to make an amends on those kind of things. Because a lot of people are kind of taking notice and everyone's going to probably, you know, be looking at that same shot. But I felt like if he touches and steps off a lot, that, that will probably be eradicated, to be honest. But look, Dillian likes a fight man, he's a fighting man. So when you go in the pocket and you want to do work, you know, there's always a potential to be pulled out of the bag. But look, we'll work at it. Dillian's health is the most important thing. And as a team, we'll look and talk and go through everything. And, you know, you know make sure he, he has the best options possible when he comes back. Dean, appreciate your time. And this time, the thumbnail will be on point. Don't worry. Two victories. Fighting out. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Act. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.